Hello Nintendo Wii here, welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. I've just come back from Nottingham and I've had a fantastic time. I've played loads of retro games in a few different places. First of all, before I played any games, I actually did a video game quiz. It was a really good quiz, it was actually quite professionally done. They had a TV in the background with the uh, questions on and there was like a sheet for you to fill out the answers. I'll put the actual picture up here, it was name the controllers and there was like eight or nine different controllers and you had to say what systems they were from. And I got them all right, so... Hooray! We got it! Here we go! Can you see it? You're all caught? Yeah! Got UMD as well. A UMD? Oh, where is it? Anime! Anime! <laughs> <laughs> So that was the night before. The next day we actually went to the NVA, the National Video Game Arcade in Nottingham. And it's a really, really cool place. There's a little cafe where you can go and have a few drinks and play some games that are set up on the TVs, on the tables. We actually played Mario Party there for a while. There was a few other games you could play there. There was a PS3 and an Xbox set up in the other room. There was an N64 playing Banjo-Kazooie. After we played that, we moved on into the other room and the first game we came to was this bomb defusal game which was really, really difficult. One person has to put on a set of goggles and you can only see the screen when you're wearing the goggles. And the other person sat at a table on the other side of the room. You sort of have this bomb on the table and you can choose the different modules on the bomb. They're different every time and you've got to sort of explain to the person who's sitting there with the manual what you can see and they sort of tell you which things you have to press. We had a few tries but unfortunately we didn't actually manage to defuse the bomb. After that, there was a few more games on that floor. There was a few arcade games. I played Phoenix, wasn't very good at it, and the original Space Invaders, which is a classic. There was a few different rooms upstairs. There's a, a museum room. This time, it keeps changing throughout the year. I've been before and it was something else. But this time they were focusing exclusively on the game Dizzy 3. And it was so cool. You had like the original map drawn out by the developers when they were making the game. So that was really, really interesting to see. There was a sort of documentary on the TV behind them, which was really cool. But the coolest thing in that room was the actual design documents. They had scans of them, or some of the originals, I'm not sure. But you could have a look through, you could have a flick through and actually see what they were writing about the game, what sort of emails they were sending to the companies back and forth. Absolutely fascinating, so that was amazing to see. Really, really cool. Ah, there we go, so you can see the original development notes from the team. Such an awesome thing, I love it when they have these sort of um, old things that are still around from back in the day when they were creating the game. And obviously they had all of the different Dizzy games. You could even play some of them. I played the NES one which I'd never actually played before so that was pretty interesting. Didn't exactly manage to get very far though. They also had loads of old merchandise from back when the game first came out which was cool to see. Then in another room on the other side there was a Neo Geo area and we played Metal Slug and Puzzle Bubble on the arcade machine there. Two fantastic games. Two of my favourites, and I, I always say if I ever have my own arcade cabinet, I'd love to have a Metal Slug machine. That would be the dream. So the room next to that had some Mario games in, it had Mario Maker and it had Mario Paint. And then upstairs, this is the main attraction I suppose, it's a big room full of arcade machines, all down one side, all down the other. A few consoles set up, there was uh, Micro Machines on the PS2, Vib Ribbon for the PS1, and then across the back they have this area which is, um, which is demonstrating some alternate control schemes. So the, these games have swapped up since the last time I was there as well. The one on the end was still the same, it's that one where you're sort of climbing up the mountain and you have to press the different keys to latch onto the different pegs, which I'm terrible at so I didn't really play that much. The next one over was surprisingly Space Cadet, the uh, pinball game that's built into Windows XP. Wasn't really expecting to see that game there, but still. Quite interesting to see, and they actually had a little pinball box set up with the flippers on the side and a button to launch the ball, so pretty cool. I, I used to like that game quite a lot back in the day, to be honest. And then, saving the most interesting for last, they had Sega Sonic, the arcade game, with a trackball. Obviously, it wasn't the original arcade cabinet, it was an emulator, obviously, but they'd actually put a trackball on the desk, which you could actually roll with your hand. Unfortunately, I found it kind of awkward to play, and I'm sure that's just the game, not the actual trackball. In the same room, in the centre of the room, is the HTC Vive. And I always love playing the Vive. I really hope that one day I'll get my own VR set. The two games that I played on the Vive, there was an archery game, which was really cool. There was like these little stick people walking around and they were trying to destroy a gate at the other end of the screen. So you had to sort of first pick up your bow in one hand, attach the arrows with the other, like so it was in front and then pull it back and then let go of the trigger and it would send the arrow flying into the stage. 
and there was a little like torch behind you that you could light your arrows on fire and then fire them at the people to blow them up a bit faster. So that was a really really fun game and the other one I played was sort of like Pong and sort of Squash where you would have some sort of generator thing on one hand that would suck the ball closer to you and then you had a bat on the other hand so you could sort of hit it away from you. And I'm always blown away by just how precise the uh, controllers are for the Vive. There's like no lag whatsoever. And it's so, so cool. I loved on the um, on the Pong style one where the whole room sort of became things that you could destroy with the ball. So you're sort of batting it up above you and all these things are falling down and then there's things bouncing off the wall and the balls come in back towards your face and you hit it away. It's just so exhilarating to play. I really, really love virtual reality. If you haven't tried it, you really need to find somewhere to give it a go because it's unbelievable. It really is. There's an early access room where you actually get to play developers' games before they're released to the public. We didn't really spend too much time in here. I wasn't too keen on the sort of games they were showing off. But there was one game that sort of reminded me of a bit of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, but instead of making cars, you made sort of pirate ships which was quite fun, so we messed around with that for a while and made some terrible ship that just sank into the sea straight away, of course. So that was really good, look out for that on Steam sometime early next year, I think it said. Can't remember what the name of the game was, but if I put the video over the top then you might be able to see from that. And then there's a room to the side which is full of really old computers, which is more sort of my thing. Got to play some really cool old games there. Played Rampage, um, the original version of Pocky and Rocky, I can't remember what it's called, Kiki Kai something, which was really fun, it's a very difficult game and I'm not sure if the controller was working properly because I couldn't seem to move straight up. There was a few other really cool games there, there was a CRT turned on its side for you to play the original Twin Bee, and I love the Twin Bee games, so I was quite excited to see that. They had loads of really interesting old computers, they had a very very old looking VR headset which was absolutely huge called the VFX 3D. I don't know how anyone could possibly walk around with that thing on their head, you just sink into the floor. And then they had some cabinets full of quite interesting uh, retro games, retro memorabilia, sort of signed copies of things, Game Genie, Action Replay, that sort of stuff. Very interesting to see. And I always love seeing this, the um, GameCube dev kit, the Nintendo Dolphin. Super excited to see this, I've seen it a few times now, but every time I do see it I'm like... That's part of my childhood right there, and I never thought I'd be able to see one, so... To see the actual dev kit in person is quite an exciting thing. And they also have a PS2 dev kit down the bottom, which is huge. And they had some drawers full of interesting things. There was the um, limited edition Xbox. But, most importantly, in the next drawer down, Barbie's Game Designer! Yes! Or, maybe not. In the centre of the room they actually had an Apple Pippin as well, which I'd never seen in person. I actually looked quite a bit bigger than I thought it would be, so that was quite interesting to see and I do hope I'll be able to pick my own one up someday. And then there was a few old Commodore Amiga sort of computers which I can never really get my head around. They were a bit even before my time, so I'd love to get one at some point and really give it a go. They also had Sensible Soccer on the Amiga. I think it was an Amiga anyway, so I watched Zach play that for a little bit. And after we'd left the NVA we went to a few other places. We went to a little arcade in one of the shopping centres and played a really, really cool Space Invaders game, which was like as tall as a shelf, if not taller. And it was like really, really bright LEDs, and you had two different guns, and you could actually shoot the Space Invaders coming down on this super bright screen. It was really, really cool, and I've never seen that before. I think it's only just come out. So that was great. Also got to play a bit of bowling, and the um, proper arcade version of Outrun coast to coast, not the weird stand-up version with the two pedals which make you want to feel like you're about to fall over. The proper sit-down outrun. So that was good to play. And then, just before I left, we went to Alt Gaming Lounge. Sort of like a bar or a restaurant crossed with a gaming cafe, which is really, really cool. So basically you go in and you can choose what table to sit at, and they all have different consoles hooked up to them. So we sat down and played a bit of Streets of Rage 2 on the Mega Drive. Which is really, really fantastic, and I wish they had something similar to that here. So jealous! Why can't I live in Nottingham? Anyway, guys, really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more episodes coming soon, don't forget to subscribe. And if you know anywhere else cool that has retro games, maybe a retro gaming museum, maybe a retro gaming cafe in the UK or somewhere else, leave it in the comments, maybe I'll go there one day and make a video about it. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.